Hello. Welcome back to How to Cake It. I'm Yolanda, and this week I'm caking giant chicken and waffles. I thought I'd make a good American meal in honor of Independence Day. Wait a minute. I'm not even sure what state chicken and waffles originate. To make my chicken and waffles cake, I baked 16 pounds of my ultimate vanilla cake between two square 12 inch pans. These are gonna be the waffles, if you didn't guess. <laughs> square chicken, anyone? The next thing I do is I use a ruler and I mark halfway up the sides. Then I carve down from the top edge. I just wanna round out the edge slightly. When I've done all four sides, I flip the cake over and do the same thing again. I repeat this process on the second cake and then it's time to simple syrup these cakes. Sir Squeeze is here and I've asked him to help me simple syrup both sides of each cake. It's time to crumb coat and chill these cakes with Italian meringue buttercream. Next week, I'll be making a straw hat cake. Well, no, I will be making a straw hat cake right now after this, but you can watch it next week. So make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss it and hit the notification bell. Now that my crumb coat is chilled, I need to crumb coat the other side of the cake. But before I flip it, I'm just gonna lay on a piece of parchment so that we don't lose that first crumb coat. Do this to both cakes. Much like the crumb coating, I need to now ice both sides of each cake in Italian meringue buttercream. So I'm gonna leave it on the side that it's on, ice that side with Italian meringue buttercream and chill both cakes. And then I'll pull them out, again, lay a piece of parchment on, flip them over and ice the other side with Italian meringue buttercream and chill. I'm very afraid of putting a pen mark on this chair. Too late. Um, <laughs> time to cover these cakes in fondant and I'll be covering them in a gorgeous, tan, un untoasted waffle color. I roll it nice and thin because what I'm covering is actually gonna be the bottom of these waffles. Drape it over, smooth it on, and then I wanna cut the excess away halfway up the waffle. I like to use a piece of board cut to the right size to cut halfway up the waffle. I make my own rulers. You know how people like to say, I make my own rules. I like to say, I make my own rulers. <laughs> they want to rule with cake at some point. You know There's no body in a ruler. Everybody must go back and watch the intro video to this channel because I talk about this. Link it! We're gonna flip these cakes over and then I need to lay on the grid pattern. <laughs> right now they're just squares. Ooh la la. To lay the grid pattern on top of these waffles, I'm gonna use some more tan fondant and I'm gonna measure out three ounce portions of fondant because when I roll them into long cords, I want them to be as precise as possible. I want them to be the same size. Now when you're rolling fondant, the key is never press harder in one area than another. Even spread your fingers if you need to as you're rolling to keep these cords nice and even. And then I start to measure my cake and decide where to lay the line. Once I have all my cords, I decide to flatten them a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I use my really long ruler, the longest one I have in the room, and I laid my cord up beside it, and then I just use a small rolling pin and roll, did I use a small one? I don't remember, I'll just say rolling pin. <laughs> Lightly over the cord to flatten it slightly. I did this to all the cords. Now I'm going to lay down this grid pattern. The first thing I do is lay down the outer uh, frame. Once the frame is set in place, then I lay all of my horizontal lines. And now I need to lay shorter lines in between to fill in the grid. Repeat this process on the second waffle so that both waffles have the exact same grid pattern. And then place your cakes in the fridge to chill for a while. Okay guys, I have something to tell you and I can't wait any longer. Camp Cake registration is officially open. Look at Sir Squeeze. Look how excited he is. Camp Cake is a live street baking event on Facebook happening on August 11th and 12th. This year we're offering two different days of caking fun. On August 11th we'll be making backyard barbecue treats that will fool all your friends. And August 12th will be a masterclass on how to make my famous watermelon cake. I'm not sure which one I'm more excited for. I'm gonna do both days, I've decided. 
Camp Cake registration is officially open, so head over to howtocakeit.com to sign up and do it now because the early bird pricing is on and it won't last forever. Register at howtocakeit.com or click here. My grids are set nicely on both my waffle cakes and it's time to cover them. And you guessed it, more tan fondant. More tan fondant! We pick it up and drape it over the waffle and then working quickly, we need to start to press the fondant into the indents. I like to use a straight pin and poke the fondant where it lays over the indents. And this is because air is trapped underneath. And if we leave it there and we start to use our fingertips, we might accidentally poke through the fondant with our fingertips, like pop it like a balloon. So by using a straight pin, we give that air somewhere to be released as we're pressing the fondant in. The trick here is to be careful but quick. I also find that having a dry paintbrush really helps because, well, my fingers are just too big to get into the corner of each indent. Your fondant will probably tear, don't worry, because this waffle's gonna be topped with fried chicken goodness and maple syrup, so in the end, we won't see these tears. It's tearing up my heart though. It's tearing up my heart when fondant tear. Wow, see how Cody just jumped right in there. We need to trim the fondant on all four sides of this waffle and we wanna trim it about three quarters of the way down so it overlaps the bottom piece of fondant. But we wanna make sure to cut a nice straight edge. When we cut that straight edge, we're then gonna sort of pick it up and line it up with the straight edge of the bottom. And so now you have like excess, there's a bit of a flap. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna carefully guide and smooth that flap downward and it's gonna cause like a seam, a pinch, almost like when you, when you pour a waffle into a waffle maker and you close it, that excess batter seeps out and there's that mm. edge. So we're trying to recreate that edge. Now you're gonna paint it. Well, no. You just know everything. I'm going to paint these waffles now with ivory mixed with clear food grade alcohol and make sure to paint the whole surface. So the grid, inside the indents, paint away. I want this paint to dry before I move on to the next step on the waffle cakes. So for now, I'm gonna put them in the fridge, allowing the paint to dry and move on to the fried chicken. We're so happy that you guys are welcoming our new family members with open arms. This week, Shannon Murphy is making a cake that was a popular request, a turtle. I think this turtle needs a name. So head over to How to Cake It Step by Step by clicking here and help us out. Leave a comment with what you think the name should be. I think his name should be Murphy. Shannon Murphy oh, yeah. and Murphy the Turtle. I won't name my turtle Prince of Darkness. <laughs> Prince of Darkness would be such a funny turtle name, don't you think? I feel like you would name anything Prince of Darkness. Yeah. This fried chicken is made out of Rice Krispies. Yum. Make a batch of Rice Krispie mixture the way it's always been made and then you wanna allow it to cool slightly. When it's cool enough, we're gonna take this mixture and form our chicken pieces. I also make a giant drumstick, and when I make this, I need something to use as the bone inside. So for this, I'm using a bread stick and building the top of the drumstick around. We're gonna make these chicken pieces at Camp Cake, but life-size. These are like the pterodactyl version. <laughs> I, did, I said to Cody, I feel like I'm a Flintstone. Once you're happy with the shapes of your pterodactyl-sized chicken pieces, just set them aside to firm up. Once my chicken pieces are set and firm, I need to brush on a mixture of honey and glucose. So I mix honey and glucose together in equal measure in a bowl. Glucose is, is great because it's super sticky. Honey is more flavorful. Sticky, but more flavorful. And now we want to set these pieces aside to let that mixture become a little more tacky. While my giant chicken pieces are waiting to be fried, I'm gonna go back to the waffles. To make these waffles look nice and toasty and perfectly cooked, I need the help of burning. And I'm just gonna turn them on and slightly brulee the tops of these waffles. Share this video with somebody who's celebrating Independence Day or just likes fried chicken and waffles. The coating on my chicken is nice and tacky and now I need to fry this chicken with some corn flakes. You can basically use any type of flake cereal that is the color of fried chicken. And what you wanna do is simply press those cereal flakes onto the glucose and honey mixture until your chicken pieces are completely coated. 
Wait a minute. I'm not even sure what state chicken and waffles originate from. I think it's Southern, for sure. I don't think it's Alaska. I'm gonna say no. no. I don't think chicken can survive in Alaska. Or the other. <laughs> They're surviving. We've got our waffles. We've got our fried chicken. We need syrup and we need butter. So I'm gonna make a mixture of 50% maple syrup and 50% dark corn syrup to thicken up the maple syrup. That's essentially what like artificial maple syrup is. To make butter, I color Italian meringue buttercream the color of butter. I use a little bit of lemon yellow and golden yellow until I've reached that perfect butter color. And then I scoop perfect scoops of butter colored buttercream and place them onto the cake. Just nestle it near the chicken. And then top that butter with a bit more syrup. I'm going to dig into this chicken and waffles. Don't forget to take a big bite out of your pterodactyl-sized chicken drumstick. And also don't forget to watch Shannon's turtle cake. It's a pterodactyl turtle. No. <laughs> it's not. Bye. Bye.